Welcome to the Mahoning Valley Historical Society's Cookie Table and Cocktails event. I'm Stan Boney of WKBN 27 First News. The event looks a lot different this year, but we have created a video presentation to highlight the history, culture, and impact of the Mahoning Valley phenomenon known as the Cookie Table. We'll be hearing from community leaders, historians, musicians, and a special guest or two about their memories of those giant tables of cookies. This year would have marked the ninth year of an in-person cookie table and cocktails event, but the COVID-19 pandemic changed the plans. There was simply no way to keep our guests, volunteers, cookie bakers, and staff safe and socially distant during the event. We hope to be back next year with the biggest cookie table yet. Until then, please consider making a donation to the Mahoning Valley Historical Society as it continues to bring high quality content to all of us throughout this difficult time. To kick things off this year, let's go back and see how the cookie table got its start with the Historical Society's Curator of Education, Tracy Manning. Thank you, Stan. I'm gonna be the first to admit that I had no idea what a cookie table was when I first moved here to Youngstown. I quickly learned that it's not just a focal point of our major celebrations, it's a deeply ingrained tradition with roots over 100 years old right here in the Mahoning Valley. No wedding is complete without one, and they take center stage at graduation parties, anniversary dinners, and other major festive moments in our lives. Friends and family work for months to create the delicacies that will fill the table, and the varieties are endless. Now the history of the cookie table goes back to Eastern and Southern European immigrants who came to the Mahoning Valley for work. <laughs> Mostly in the burgeoning steel industry at the turn of the 20th century. Money was tight, but family love and the desire to celebrate together was huge. So instead of spending the money on one large cake or some really massive sweets, it made sense to have the extended family each bring an offering of cookies. Financially, it was a lot easier, but more than that, it got everyone involved in a really personal way. There might be an aunt who made the best clothespins that everyone was looking forward to, or maybe it was grandma's kolache that everyone was eyeing. Now, no one really knows when the first cookie table appeared or who started it, but there are a couple of stories that give us some ideas. One story goes back to an Italian tradition where a bride and groom would lead their guest to a dessert table that had one massive cake made of cookies. Now, each one of those guests involved in that cookie dance would be invited to take a cookie and celebrate together. 
Another tradition looks at the Christmas spreads that would be made in Southern and Eastern Europe. And these spreads were massive. Families and friends would work for days to create treats for more than 100 of their closest friends and family. So baking on such a grand scale was kind of in their blood. Now the tradition over time continued and it grew a lot, <laughs> but it never really caught on outside of the Mahoning Valley, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh. In fact, it's so popular in Pittsburgh that they claim it as their own. Over the years, it's been kind of a fun debate back and forth between historians, bakers, and families over where the phenomenon actually began. But for this video, we're gonna claim it as our own. Now, because this is such an ingrained tradition in the Mahoning Valley, we here at the Mahoning Valley Historical Society, along with our History to Go team, decided to feature it as the centerpiece for an interactive fundraiser. And that's what you're gonna hear about next. Again, thanks for joining us for this videotape version of Cookie Table and Cocktails. Next, we'll hear from Bill Lawson, Executive Director of the Mahoning Valley Historical Society, Scott Zoldan, President of the Board, and Frank Ruley, Chairman of the History to Go team, along with messages from our title sponsors. Hello, I'm Bill Lawson, Executive Director of the Mahoning Valley Historical Society, Welcome to our very special event. I want to tell you about the history of our organization, which is long-standing here in our community. Mahoning Valley Historical Society was founded September 10, 1875 in Youngstown at the Old Opera House. I'm here at the Arms Family Museum, 648 Wick Avenue. This was the home of Olive and Wilford Arms from 1905 until 1960 when Mrs. Arms passed. She then bequeathed the property to the Historical Society. We took ownership in 1961 and first opened as a public museum in 1964. For over 145 years, MVHS has carried on its mission to collect, preserve, and teach the history of the people, all people of the Mahoning Valley. Our diverse offerings of in-person programs and events reach over 25,000 people in a normal year. MVHS acquired the former Harry Burt Ross Radio Building in downtown Youngstown in 2007. After a successful $6.5 million capital campaign and renovation and restoration project, Tyler History Center opened in 2014 and was fully operational in 2017. The Arms Family Museum, Tyler History Center, and their exhibits, research, and educational programs are accredited by the American Alliance of Museums an honor held by less than 10% of all museums and history centers across the country. We look forward to having people back at our sites in person, but until then, you can visit Mahoning Valley Historical Society virtually at mahoninghistory.org and through our social media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. So now you know more about our historical society. Let's learn about our signature event and the people who make it possible. Hello, my name is Frank Rooley and I am the chairperson of the History to Go team, which is the committee within the Historical Society that helps the organization bring local history to the community. One of our major events in the year is the Cookie Table and Cocktails event. If I could polka while I did this, this would be amazing. Beyond the History to Go event series, which includes the very popular Oak Hill Cemetery Tour, the History to Go team has been assisting the Mahoning Valley Historical Society in fundraising events since 2004. In 2013, the Historical Society had finally completed construction on the Tyler History Center. At that point, they asked the team to help them develop a fundraising event that would bring awareness to this new facility and raise funds for the exhibit hall. We are now in the first reception space for the cookie tables and cocktails, the Doctors Thomas and Maria Folk Exhibit Gallery. Oh, 
The cookie table seems to be a perfect fit for the Mahoney Valley Historical Society's fundraising event. It is a long-standing tradition within the valley and one that has been embraced by all the peoples of the community. We are now in the ballroom of the Tyler History Center, a beautiful and historic location that hosted the first five years of cookie table and cocktails. As the event expanded, so too did the tradition of the cookie table itself. At the centerpiece of our event is a cookie competition. It celebrates the talents of local bakers, challenges them to explore new recipes, and most importantly, invites a new generation of bakers to the cookie table. Good evening, and welcome to the ninth annual Cookie Tables and Cocktails fundraiser to benefit the Mahoning Valley Historical Society. My name is Scott Zolden, and on behalf of the staff and full board of directors, I'd like to welcome you all to this wonderful event in its ninth year. We'd like to take a moment to thank all of you who are tuning in, as well as our sponsors, both corporate and individual. Without the tremendous support of the local community, this event could not be what it has been for the past nine years. It gets better every year, as hard as that is to imagine, and it only happens through the support of our sponsors, our members, and the community at large. One of the key features of the recent Cookie Table and Cocktails events has been the music of Del Sinchak and his band, their lively polka music, as much a part of the Mahoning Valley as, well, the Cookie Table itself. Let's visit with Del and Gary Ramey at Peppermint Productions and hear for the first time his new Cookie Table Polka. Hi Youngstown, welcome to Peppermint Productions. My name is Gary Ramey and uh, this is my place and I welcome you to it. Uh, here with me today is Del Sinchak, a legendary music man in the Youngstown area. When you talk about history in our area, uh, Del has been part of a band for 72 years. He's 85 years old. Where is Del? There he is. Stand up, Del. Del Sinchak, congratulations. Hi, Del Sinchak here. You know, over the years we've played thousands of weddings, and actually most of the weddings we played for had cookie tables galore. You know, I'm not originally from Youngstown, I'm actually from Worcester, Ohio. And while we had weddings over there, the cookie table was something that I really was happy to discover once I came to this area. <laughs> My favorite kind of cookie, I think, uh, are kolachi. And how many different cookies do I like? How many knobs are on my control board? That's about the answer to that. <laughs> and I've been here with Gary probably for 30 years. Said, where else are we going here? Over the years, uh, we had the occasion to do 10 CDs with the Del Sinchak Band. And two of them were nominated for Grammys. And uh, Gary and I both had an opportunity to go to the Grammy Awards to walk down a red carpet it was just a thrill of my life, really. So today our goal is to record the cookie table polka. I say, the polka party is now in full swing until they bring out the cookie boxes. We were asked by the Historical Society to compose a song that would pay tribute and use in their presentation of their virtual cookie table program this year. Then the dance floor is a stamp of blue hairs and silver foxes. And we looked at some songs that he had already recorded and we found Olay, which we thought would work well. And look out for the, see there could be more stuff in there like he's got like Yeah. And so we wrote some words and we had some contributions by other people and we put it all together and uh, this is what happens. And Dell and I have been working together making polka music for a number of years. How many? 
Well, uh, I couldn't eat that many cookies, let me tell you that. Hey, hey, Gary. Are we ready to do the cookie table polka? All set. Hi, Del Sinchak here, reminding you, it's cookie table time. Everybody, come on and join me, cause it's cookie time in Youngstown. Olé, 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 olé. It's cookie time in Youngstown. My pal Gary That's me Two white wines and a double vodka I see pit cells and the kolache And then the close pins made by Bobka Olé, 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 olé It's cookie time in Youngstown Olé, 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 olé It's cookie time in Youngstown party is now in full swing until they bring out the cookie boxes then the dance floor becomes a stampede of blue hairs and silver foxes olé, 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 olé. it's cookie time young I like that, Gary. Yes, sir. I like it. Yep. The cookie table would be impossible without the contributions of the cookie bakers at weddings and other celebrations. These bakers are often the families and friends who spend weeks or months creating their specialties. At our cookie table and cocktails event, these bakers work to create thousands of cookies, cream wafers, clothespins, pitzels, and buckeyes, along with elaborately decorated sugar cookies, family recipes, and ethnic treats. Let's hear from some of those bakers, Stacy Adger and Shelley Del Signor, both former winners. All right, thank you, Stan. It's funny because I used to work with Stan many, many years ago. I'm Stacy Adger, and today we are going to make Italian lemon cookies, but I want to talk a little bit about history and, and genealogy and how it all comes together with cookie table. Um, a lot of communities, like the African-American community, um, really the cookie table wasn't necessarily a thing. It's taking on growing importance in the years since then. What we usually do are sweet tables. So it's a mix of cookies, it's a mix of um, 
little candies, homemade things, but it's also something like bringing it to the community and, and to the community table, like a karamu, a community feast type of thing. A lot of different ethnic groups do a lot of different things, and it's, it's kind of cool to merge all of these together in this one great event that we have each year here at the Tyler History Center. Um, I am looking at and touching my mother's wedding present. These are bowls that my mother and my father were gifted when they got married in the 1950s. And there's a kinship too in baking because we all share recipes or we all talk about different things and how recipes work. My claim to Italian heritage is I grew up in Briar Hill. So there you go, that's, that's my claim. So that's why I'm using the recipe. Um, Italian lemon cookies, in this bowl I have a cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour, then it calls for a quarter of a cup and two tablespoons of cornstarch, and then the zest of a lemon. You also have uh, lemon juice that you're setting aside. So that's in this bowl. In this bowl, I have three quarters of a cup and two tablespoons of butter, and it is softened, and then I've added a half a cup of powdered sugar. The way you put it together is the flour, the cornstarch, zest, and salt all into one bowl. You beat the butter, and the powdered sugar with an electric mixer until it's nice and creamy. So you'll add half of the powdered mixture and a tablespoon of lemon to the combined butter and powdered sugar mixture. You, you mix it with an electric mixer until it's completely together. And then you pour the remainder of the dry ingredients and the remainder of the lemon juice into this, and then that you mix by hand. Get everything combined, you take it out, put it on a sheet of parchment paper, and then you shape it and roll it into a roll that's about an inch, maybe about an inch and a quarter wide. It's supposed to be a circle. This was having a bad day when it got chilled, so it, it didn't make a complete circle, but we got the general gist of it. So you put that in and you refrigerate it for about an hour in the parchment paper, and then after that, you take it out and you use a knife, but since I have my spatula here, you cut about a half inch slices of cookie. And then you place them on a pan that's already got parchment paper on it. You preheat the oven to 320 and let them cook at 320 for basically five minutes. Then you take them out and you boost the temperature to 350. And once it gets to 350 degrees, that's when you put the cookies back in the oven and you continue baking those for another 10 minutes until they are light brown and golden. In the end, you will end up with cookies that look like these. Nice light little brown, little, little color to them and everything. Now you can, with this recipe, leave it as is, or just simply dust with a little bit of powdered sugar. But there's also an ingredient, or also a recipe for the glaze. And that is a cup and a half of powdered sugar, zest from a lemon, and of course the zest is just the yellow part, you don't wanna get the uh, underside white part. You zest, you use a little bit of zest, and then three tablespoons of lemon juice. That all goes in a bowl and you use a whisk to combine it. You whisk it up and you get a paste type of mixture. And then basically what you do is you take, and yeah, I'm supposed to use a knife, but I'm doing it my way today. You put it on to the cookie swirl it around. If you want to use like little sprinkles on top, little perels or something like that, you can. Again, this calls for lemon zest. So if you want to back off on some of the actual zest of the lemon, you can exclude it from the actual glaze or you can reduce it in both the cookie and then also the glaze. And the finished product and like I said, this is a nice, easy recipe. The yield is only about 22 cookies. So if you're looking at making cookies for like a wedding or some bigger function, you know, naturally do the addition and multiplication to get you to where you need to be. But that's it.
The one thing I do want to say is take the time, if you have little kids, niece, nephew, uh, kids growing up, um, this is a way of bonding with them. This is a way of keeping traditions alive. So that's something that, especially in these times, is very important. So make sure that you are sharing your family history, your family legacy with the next generation so that they can share it with their children as well. Thank you. I'm Stacy Adger. Let's check back in with our bakers to see how those cookies are coming along. Hi, my name is Shelly Del Signor, and I have what we call Shelly's Cookies. It's a small business that I work on um, in my home. And several of the years I have done uh, a decorated cookie. And I have to always do something with dots. It's one of my favorite things to apply to a cookie. Uh, a lot of people have a problem with it and today we're going to try to solve that in learning how to do a consistency. And I have a bowl of royal icing and what we do is um, we use water, just keep stirring. Royal icing is really, it's powdered sugar, um, meringue, uh, meringue powder is what I use or you can use egg whites and it just is all about the consistency. They will say your icing consistency needs to be a 20 second, it could be 15, 20, 25. Well, the way that you figure that out and you draw a line into it and then however long it takes for that that little gap, and I used to seriously count it. I don't count it anymore. So that wasn't too hard, was it? <laughs> and you do keep your uh, royal icing covered um, because it dries out very, very, very quickly. This is a cookie that I just did up, and I was just gonna show you how we do piping lines going around the outside, and it's, um, you know, one of the things that I really enjoy doing. When you're doing piping to go around the outside of a cookie, um, you touch down and then you keep it away from the surface. It's the consistency and the pressure. So I guide and then I press with this hand. And it's all just takes practice. So I'm gonna do some white dots on this one. So I touch down and I squeeze. Touch down and squeeze and release. So do you, can you see that? So that is, that is the beginning of decorating. This is a stencil. And so what I do is I take a scraper and then I just hold the stencil down on top of the cookie and then I just scrape the icing through. And so, I don't know if that'll show up enough. And then you can just do detail work just like we were before. Sometimes I have 100 dots on a cookie. This is uh, a rather detailed cookie. And there's two things on here. Let's see if we can make it happen. The mom is just done in a, um, a color that I can coordinate with and then just uh, go over it so we can just it's like it's giving me an outline so the raised look is really nice for um, added detail I know this was just a short demonstration but I'm available for questions on Shelly's cookies on Facebook The cookie bakers aren't just creating those cookies for the enjoyment of the more than 350 guests at the event. 
There is serious competition involved to see who makes the best cookies in a variety of categories. The people who make those decisions have the toughest job in Youngstown. Let's hear from Audra and Jason Carlson about the difficult task of narrowing down the cookies to just a few winners. Thanks, Stan. Hi, I'm Audra Carlson. I'm Jason Carlson. And we judged the Cookie Tables and Cocktails event for several years in a row. Um, our last time being in 2019. Uh, it is quite the prestigious event being asked to judge and we take it very seriously. Uh, some of the categories in addition to the best professional cookie overall and the best amateur cookie are the best traditional cookie, best cocktail inspired cookie, which is my favorite, uh, best decorated cookie, best use of a unique ingredient, best chocolate cookie, and best twist on tradition. And inside each one of those categories, you had to go through and do presentation, taste, texture, and size. It has to be just the right cookie size. Sometimes the best tasting cookie wasn't the right size or just wasn't good looking enough, right? But um, yeah, what, what was your favorite thing about being a judge? Besides eating the cookies, my favorite part was meeting people. I kind of liked it when it got really intense. Like, I remember times where people were <laughs> arguing and, and shouting. It, it did get intense. <laughs> Everyone had their own favorite cookie. And we hate to see a cookie that we love lose. And speaking of favorite cookies, my favorite cookie is the sugar cookie. I like the way it looked and I love the way it tastes. What was your favorite? I remember a key lime cookie that was so good and um, a spicy chocolate number Oh, with time. the jalapeno. It may have been a Florentine. Oh. It was so good. So good. But um, we are so sad that the event's not happening this year. But we want to make sure that Tyler History Center and all the folks at Mahoning Valley Historical Society get to keep on doing what they're doing and all, all the great things that you're adding to the community. And we appreciate you. We can't wait to have fun and have cookies with you again. And um, just thank you so much. And we hope to see you all soon. Thank you. See you soon. The cookie table is only one part of this great event, the other, the cocktails. Over the years, the History to Go team has created signature cocktails to coincide with the event's theme. This year, no different. Get your recipe card ready as Brian McCullough shows us how to make this year's signature cocktail. Thank you, Stan, and welcome to McCullough Manor here in beautiful Campbell, Ohio. It's an honor and a privilege today to be able to present to you the special cocktail for this year's Cookie Tables and Cocktails. Hope that we are all together next year and can enjoy these together. Normally I am a dry martini man, but for this event, knowing that there is sweetness, of course, that goes with cookies, I've created a special cocktail just for this occasion. The name I've given it is a puddler. Now a puddler was a unique position at the steel mills, um, that was a skilled position that was the one who worked the pig iron into wrought iron. And the color that you'll see here today is red like a furnace. And also, it's for a tribute to my grandfather, who had that position at the Youngstown Sheet and Tube for many years. Now, what we're going to start with is, in your shaker here, we're going to put in a little bit of ice to get the drink chilled. Next, we're going to go with gin as our base here. And I recommend a more non-aromatic gin like a beef eater, which is not overpowering. Two ounces of your beef eater. We are then going to go with Chambord, which is a raspberry liqueur. For this, we are going to go with one ounce of the Chambord. To this, we are going to add half an ounce of Luxardo, which is a maraschino liqueur. 
Now, we've put in two very sweet substances with our gin, so we need to back that off just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some Campari, just to give it a little bit of a tart flavor as it comes out. Got that in there. We're going to put in just a little bit of orange on that, just to give it a little bit of freshness and taste to that. It's not coming apart the easiest, but we've got it here now. I'm going to rim our glass with that. Throw that in. Now let's give this a good shake until we have a chilled shaker. Usually about 15 seconds is what it takes. And we're going to pour. Delicious. Enjoy it and have a great cookie tables and cocktails. I'm not originally from Youngstown. I grew up in Finley, Ohio, where no one ever heard of a cookie table. But I married a Boardman girl, and at our wedding, there was a whole room filled with cookies. Some of the Finley friends and relatives still talk about all those cookies. Next, we're going to take some time to hear from a few special guests about their memories of the cookie table. Ciao a tutti da Cesena in Italia e grazie mille per l'invito al vostro evento Cookie Table and Cocktails. Hello everyone, coming to you from Cesena, Italy. And uh, we're happy to be here for the ninth annual Cookie Table and Cocktails event from the Mahoney Valley Historical Society. My name is Chiara Bucaria, and I'm a professor in Italy at the University of Bologna. And um, the reason I, I'm here, my connection to Youngstown is that I did my MA at YSU. And my name is Anthony Metzl, and I'm also a professor at the University of Bologna, uh, but I'm formally, I was born and raised in and around Youngstown, Ohio, and I also went to YSU and that's where we met. Yeah, and the interest is, Thing for me um, as an Italian coming to Youngstown was that I actually learned a lot about um, Italy. Um, it sounds maybe like a paradox, but uh, that's true. For example, I didn't know about the uh, cookie table tradition. Um, I always say that as far as I know, uh, we don't have that, or at least I wasn't aware of that until I came to Youngstown. Um, I guess the first time I saw that was when I went to a wedding um, a friend's, friend's wedding, um, and that was the first time. And then uh, the other time that I actually experienced the cookie table was at our American wedding. Mm -hmm. We first got married in, in Italy, Italy. Yeah. and then we had a, uh, another reception in Youngstown mm -hmm. at the uh, Forum Library, actually, mm -hmm. and we did have a cookie table there. Um, one of the uh, things we had there was uh, pizzelles, mm. uh, and that's another thing that I didn't know about. Uh, I believe they're originally from Abruzzo, so that makes sense because of the um, yeah. Abruzzese um, tradition. Hey, Chiara, look at this. What's that? It's a pizzel iron. Oh, wow. An exclusive for the ninth annual Cookie Table and Cocktails at the Mahoney Valley Historical Society. We will be doing an unboxing of a material object artifact that was bought in a small market town in Italy, a traditional pizzelle maker. Shall we take a look inside? Let's see it. Ooh, whoa, look at that. Now, an interesting thing about pizzelle makers, many people would have their initials or their family stemma inside or a picture or something that would be special to their family, traditional ones. And this would be put on the range. It would take forever, uh, but this was the actual, the traditional way. Cool. We wish you all the best for, for the event. Cheers to you. Salute. Chin chin. Salute. Enjoy the event. Eat copious amounts of cookies. Salute. Hi everyone. My name is Matt McClure and I'm a co-founder and owner of Youngstown Clothing Company. 
We're a local clothing shop and we make high quality vintage inspired apparel that celebrates our Youngstown and Mahoning Valley roots. I wanted to hop on here today in true PSA fashion and remind everyone it's not a Youngstown wedding without a cookie table. This is uh, one of our original designs and the cookie table is also one of our favorite local traditions. To us, it's, uh, it's us honoring our grandparents and great grandparents generation, um, you know, making the same recipes and that have been passed down that we're gonna continue to pass down. And uh, to us, it also signifies, you know, more than just cookies and weddings. Um, you know, we, we think it symbolizes, you know, uh, our grandparents and generations that have come before us making the best out of a tough time and a, and a tough situation. And we just feel like that, that mentality, that spirit is kind of woven into the fabric of who we are, um, for in this area, um, how much family means and how important you know, and, and we're just so proud to be from here and we love making shirts that celebrate celebrate being from, being from this area. Uh, I'm standing inside of our Southern Park Mall location right now. If you'd like to come check out this shirt or some of our other uh, nostalgic Youngstown merchandise, um, we are located inside the center court. Uh, we also have a website, ytownclothing.com. You can check out all of our designs on there as well. And uh, with that being said, I just want to say thank you so much for thinking of us to be a part of this ninth annual Cookie Tables and Cocktails event. We hope you're all enjoying your favorite cookies and uh, drinks right now. And we also hope that next year, um, this will be back to in person so we can eat cookies together. So thank you. Uh, thanks again and cheers. I consider the cookie table to be the main attraction at any Youngstown wedding. If you didn't have a cookie table at your wedding, did you ever really get married? Yeah, I don't think so. There is just something about Youngstown food traditions that people hold on to for dear life, like no place else. You got your Briar Hill, you got your wedding soup, and of course you got your cookie tables. My mom came here in her 20s and met my dad, who is a third generation Youngstonian who grew up on the west side. When my mom came here, she became Youngstown woke with all these food traditions. Coming from her Mexican culture, which is all about food and family, she immediately gravitated towards the Youngstown traditions. It really made our home growing up really the centerpiece of all of our family gatherings. I think the best thing about cookie tables is this mesh of different cultures coming together and creating something beautiful and yummy. The Youngstown cookie table is also just this perfect combination of old recipes and new recipes that come together and just symbolize how far this town has come. My favorites are pitzels, come on. Jerry, I made a whole batch of pizzelles just for you. I know how you like the anisette. Mm -hmm. Good. Hi, everybody. This is Ed O'Neill coming to you from uh, Los Angeles, California. I got a phone call from a dear friend of mine, Tish McKelvey, who told me about the Mahoning Valley Historical Society's ninth annual fundraiser, cookie tables and cocktails, and would I like to be a part of it? And I said, yeah. And this kind of jogged my memory a little bit because I remember a couple of years ago, I got a phone call from Jacqueline Marino at Youngstown State University. And she told me she was publishing a book of essays using people who grew up in Youngstown, telling their stories about what it was like through the form of short stories, poetry, essays, and would I like to be a part of that? I said, okay. So I wrote a short story called A Few Cold Nights in 58, and it's in that 
anthology book. And the name of that anthology book is Car Bombs to Cookie Tables. Now, I remembered at the time, I knew what a car bomb was. You know, growing up, we used to call that the Youngstown tune-up, kind of gallows humor. But I thought, I don't know what a cookie table is. You know, and I, I had a lot of Italian-American friends in Youngstown, and I ate in a lot of their kitchens, and I, I went to all the Italian restaurants, my favorite food. And I also knew about certain Italian traditions in Youngstown, like Briar Hill pizza, and wedding soup. But I never heard this term, cookie tables. So I Googled it, and sure enough, Youngstown, Cookie tables came into existence around the turn of the century. The Italian immigrants, a little short of cash, somebody getting married in lieu of buying a big cake that would have to feed a lot of people that would come to a reception. Neighbors and friends made these great cookies and displayed them on a long table. And then my memory was jogged a little further. I thought, yeah, I have had cookies at wedding receptions in Youngstown on long tables, but nobody ever came up to me and said, this is a beloved Italian-American tradition. It's called cookie tables, Ed. I started to feel a little insecure. I mean, I thought, is it possible that my Italian-American friends would keep this beloved tradition from me because I'm of Irish descent? Nah. Anyway, I hope you go to this and enjoy the cookies because they're great. Have a couple of cocktails. I wish I could join you because I like cookies and I do like an occasional cocktail. And I always like coming back to Youngstown. So have a good time. Hi, I'm Nanette Lepore, fashion designer in New York City. And I'm thrilled to be a part of the cookie table and cocktails event. Um, I'd like to share with you some of my memories of my favorite cookie tables. But as a child, I would was so excited for every holiday because my Aunt Stella would have the most amazing cookie table every Christmas. And during parties and events, there was no one really monitoring how many cookies you ate. So for me, it was just like such a happy time. I would just feast on cookies and one was more beautiful than the next and more delicious. So when I grew up, I wanted to recreate the cookie table, but there wasn't always a wedding and there was never always an Aunt Stella around to create those beautiful cookies. So my daughter and I made a few, but it wasn't until I realized that my niece's really great friend, Beth Klaus, was a master cookie maker. And since we have met Beth and she started creating cookies for my Christmas parties, my Christmas parties have been famous for their cookie scape. Instead of like bouquets or flowers, I have a table laden with the most beautiful cookies with pine and funny reindeer and then towers of cookies. And I love having like a tiered cookie plate because then you just get this beautiful sort of Victorian looking cookie event. And all my New York City friends are thrilled and excited to be part of it because they have never experienced a true Youngstown cookie table until they came to my house. I'd like to introduce you to the cookie maestro, Beth Klaus. <laughs> Thanks, Annette. So I think it had to have been about 15 years ago that I started coming to your party in New York City. And I think the first year I just brought some cookies along because it's what Youngstown people do. You know, we always have cookies. And I think we all realized that we just loved having our favorites and talking about them and, you know, turning it into some, a conversation topic. And it started to grow year after year. So I think maybe in 2018, we, uh, you know, we went from six different kinds of cookies to 34. And that cookie scape on the piano just grew and grew. And, you know, guests, I, I recall over the years, guests would have their favorites. And so, you know, we have to make sure that we have this kind of cookie next year. And it, it's always, it's such a great conversation piece. And cookies just bring us all together. 
it's such a special part of Youngstown and it's really great that we could bring it to New York for your party every year. Maybe I'll have to start working on a list for next year. So perhaps I can contribute to the Mahoney Valley Historical Society's cookie tables and cocktail event. Oh, that would be fun. Can I be a judge? Hey guys. I'm Kate. And I'm Colin. And we're Money Cat. We're both originally from Youngstown. I grew up in Hubbard. And I grew up in Austin Town. Uh, and now we live in Los Angeles. And boy, can I really use some cookies right about now. Yeah, this is the year where we could really use them. We miss all of our friends and family. We miss all the delicious food. And we can't wait to come back and visit you guys when it's safe. And we can get together and have one of these things in person. We were explaining to some people that we knew from out here about what a cookie table was. They had no idea. And then we got really deep and we started telling them how symbolically they represent what our hometown has taught us. Totally. And all these wonderful lessons that we learned from them. So now we're gonna break down those overly thought through symbolic representations <laughs> of what a cookie table means to us as people from Youngstown, Ohio, yep. who are missing home. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one was the concept of this big diverse table with all of your roots and all the people you love are represented there on, uh, in cookie form. All my aunts and all the people on my Lebanese side of their family would be baklava and those little ones with the pistachios and the rose and the, the phyllo dough. So fantastic. On my mom's side of the family, they bring out um, peanut butter blossoms and buckeyes and clothesman cookies and all these delicious things that I look forward to. I'll never forget when I was little, my grandma would bring all of the grandkids to like the basement of some church so that we could all learn the correct way to make pizzelles so that we could always show up and like represent um, at any party we went to. We could we could bring some pizzelles and add to the cookie table. Awesome. The second thing that we were talking about is how it taught us to like go big or go home. <laughs> there could be a wedding with 20 people and there's going to be 19 thousand cookies for you to so choose true. from and that's just non-negotiable that's how it's gonna go that's where you gotta go it's almost a sense of pride yeah how big is my cookie table <laughs> um which it kind of brings us to the third one yeah. which is the concept of sharing that i think we've taken with us for the rest of our life hopefully i mean there's no way you're getting out of that wedding without some relative coming up when you're trying to put your coat on and handing you like seven tupperware containers <laughs> Full of cookies, and uh, you know, I would always end up eating them with every meal for the next three weeks, which was always amazing. I'm not complaining, but you had to beat them before they got stale. That's not me. What I would do is I would only be able to get back to my regularly scheduled diet <laughs> on Monday morning if I got rid of every single cookie that I took home. So I would take as many as you, That's but I good. would eat nothing but cookies until they weren't in the house anymore. So I was like on an all cookie diet after. Uh, that's definitely any the way to do it. I think I like. <laughs> yeah. I wish I had known that back then. I would have just eaten them all. Um, in our home or in our neighborhood out here, though, there is a bakery uh, down the street from us in Studio City in They're Los Angeles. They're from Ohio. And we stopped by for this special occasion. And they had Buckeye cookies. That's some Ohio represent. Yeah. We love you. We miss you. We wish we could be with you. Have a wonderful event, and we'll see you next year. See you soon. Think. I just ate the whole thing. I told you. That's how fast I eat them. That's okay. That's what, that's, there's no wrong way to eat a buckeye. <laughs>
you're Polish and you're proud, say na zdrowie. Na zdrowie. If you're Croatian and you're proud, say kakuti. Kakuti. If you're Slovak and you're proud, say jak się masz real loud. If you're Slovak and you're proud, say jak się masz. If you're Slovenian and you're proud, say kakosi. Kakosi. If you're German and you're proud, say krishko. If you're Italian and you're proud, say kumusta real loud. If you're Italian and you're proud, say kumusta. If you're Polish and you're proud, say na zdrowie. If you're Croatian and you're proud, say kakuti. If you're Slovak and you're proud, say jak się masz real loud. If you're Slovak and you're proud, say jak się masz. If you like polkas and you're proud, clap your hands. If you like polkas and you're proud, clap your hands. If you like polkas, then you're proud to clap your hands real loud. If you like polkas, then you're proud to clap your hands. Don't forget to check out the results of the silent auction and basket raffle on the Mahoning Valley Historical Society website. All of the information to pick up your prizes can be found there, along with the link to make a donation to support the Historical Society. We want to thank you again, and also our sponsors, for joining us here tonight as we explored the history and importance of our cookie table tradition. We hope to see you all next year for our 10th annual Cookie Table and Cocktails event. I'm Stan Boney. Thanks for being with us. Good night.